possibly one of the most classic Disney movies of all time is Peter Pan. It is such a fun world inhabited by interesting characters and is just a fun story. It's nothing special compared to the adventures kids are used to seeing out of movies nowadays, but there's still something just so special about Peter Pan that you can't take away from it. It has the sense of bliss and ignorance that comes with comes hand in hand with childhood and well is at the marvel of just being quite simple. This film encapsulates childhood, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Hello everyone, I'm Fictional Fanatics, and today we're going to try to talk about how Peter Pan perfectly portrays childhood. Th this is supposed to be Peter Pan hat, not a word about it. Now, there are many aspects of Peter Pan to discuss, good and bad, but today I'm going to be focusing solely on the portrayal of childhood and not talking about any other things, because there are some big, red topics I'd like to avoid. Now, anyways, from the moment Peter Pan started, I got the impression that there's just something about it that was childhood. It not it wasn't nostalgic or a part of childhood, but that it tries to be a representation of childhood. And I mean, of course, this film is about childhood. Wendy not wanting to grow up was the whole starting action of the film. Yeah, it's about childhood. But what I mean is that on a deeper level... I think that it shows off aspects of childhood in metaphorical ways, and not just the literal role, mainly with Neverland. Now, at the start of the movie, we see the kids dreaming about going to Neverland. They are role-playing as Peter Pan and Captain Hook using those, uh, hangers, and they're like, bing, bing, bing. Um, and yeah, they're, they're on a treasure quest. Now, childhood always seems to be romanticized. As you get older, you look back fondly and everyone talks about best time of their life and uh yeah um but as a young child also you see getting older not necessarily growing up but like becoming more of a child when you're young like going up the next stage adds infinite wonders and endless possibilities the mother looks back fondly on the time where she must have been like wendy and see the children specifically wendy look to the future with hope and wonder what would happen if peter pan came looking to her childhood um, but we also have the father who looks back on his childhood. He thinks that Peter Pan is a sham and that Wendy needs to grow up. But something that really got me thinking was at the end of the film, when he sees the silhouette of Hook's ship, he gets a sense of deja vu. With him, I almost wonder if he had heard and seen all the fun experiences that his other chil that other children have had. But he never got to experience it because he grew up too quickly. And for that, he resented his childhood. That makes sense to me and explains why when he sees the ship, he doesn't feel happy nor sad, but almost a longing and a pondering of what if. Either way, in the mortal world, it's the stage of before and after childhood. When we are in London, you are not a child, you're either too young or too old, but not currently in childhood. I think that Peter Pan, who can cross between London and the other one or childhood and adulthood, is your inner child. In the end, no one ever is truly grown up everywhere no matter how serious they may seem and trust me most people think i'm very serious and well look at me now <laughs> childhood is something that fades away as you lose your innocence and that is what childhood is i think it's innocence but you cannot fully lose your innocence or else you're not really human so it's something that will always be with you just like how there's a little bit of peter inside of you basically so and even just who peter is as a character he's reminiscent of a child he is sweet, and he's not very deep or developed as a character. He doesn't understand the feelings Wendy had for him, wanting to kiss him. Uh, and he didn't realize that Tiger Lily was flirt earning with him. Uh, and he's a risk taker because he doesn't understand the consequences. He also can be over the top, like banishing Tinkerbell forever, or getting mad when Wendy just tells the Lost Boys a story. He's a raw child who has never grown up and represents childhood. It is a fun time when you feel like you're on top of the world and like you are the center of the world and it is your playground. But speak of Peter's world, Neverland truly is something special. It represents a child's view on the world. It's a magical thing and even the most dangerous things are a game. I'll say that how the film treated the Native Americans was horrible, really bad. But the one, one thing I liked was how it said that the Lost Boys and the Mer Native Americans, while they were fighting all the time, they were playing, and it wasn't really like death, it was a game. The pirates, while sure are a threat, are also treated as silly and buffoons. They are dangerous, but also seem quite fun, uh, like when they're doing that song and trying to recruit the boys. Fighting for them is fun, and at least with Peter, 
The mermaids are also quite interesting as they're something which seems sweet and nice but are actually mean. They almost don't fill into the world well while everything else is fun and innocent. The mermaids feel like the most adult thing in the world and they're not as much as a child you'd expect but like teenage girls who are trying to act older. Actually, backtracking a bit, the pirates are like teenage boys. They are both hostile things in the film. The mermaids are heavily flirtatious with Peter, but mean and cold to Wendy. The pirates, while trying to act big and tough, are actually still children if you look deep, deep enough. Like, for example, Sleeves, I Love Mother Tattoo. And the Indians and Lost Boys seem to be young children, which, yeah, offensive that those are the Indians. But... All of the characters are children, whether they hide it behind like the mermaids and pirates try to act different, whether it's tough like the pirates, or act older like the mermaids, or embrace it like the Lost Boys and the Indians. Neverland is a place where you learn to grow out of your childhood. You might be one to fight the Indians or hang out with mermaids, but and it is shaping you to grow out of your childhood. Because I think that's what Neverland is, and what childhood is. It's the period of your life where it's it, you can choose the path on who you want to be. As a child, you have no personality, and you're no different than the rest when you come out of the womb. Childhood is setting you up for life and preparing you to be who you want, and growing up is choosing to who you want to be and developing that part of yourself. It's why in all of Neverland, the characters are so simple. They haven't and will never grow up. They're a blank stereotype and can't go any further than that. So yeah. Peter Pan is a metaphor for childhood. The human world in the film represents the stages. When you're not a child, Peter Pan represents your inner child, and Neverland represents childhood. While Peter Pan might not be my, one of my favorite Disney movies of all time, I do appreciate it, and I've watched a lot of my childhood, and I do think the story perfectly encapsulates the child's journey in one of the best ways I think I've seen in media. But anyways, what do you think? Do you agree? Disagree? And what do you think about the film as a whole? That's a that's a spicy topic, but l let me know in the comments down below. If you want to check out why Mulan is the best film for female empowerment, and it's in a sea of mediocrity, check out this video. Subscribe for more breakdowns of Disney films, because I have a lot more coming. Once again, thank you for subscribing, and until the next one, bye. Let me know, let me know if you want to have a sword fight with me. I've got my, I've got my video, bye.